The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how to act on them. If you haven't yet viewed the Watch Me First video, please do that first as it lets you know what to expect. As you read in Chapter 5, sets and search folders are dynamic shortcuts to other components, meaning that their members remain in folders but can additionally be accessed and worked on via sets and search folders. In this video, we show what sets and folders look like and where they are stored. We discuss some practical and analytic uses for sets and search folders. We show you how to create them in different ways and a few of the actions that can be taken on them. Sets and search folders are stored in the collections navigation area. You can see that there are separate folders for sets and search folders. We discuss them together and think about them as one component only because, as we discuss in Chapter 5, the actions that can be taken on them are the same. The only difference is how they are created. Before we look at ways of creating them, let's just be clear about how they function. I said earlier that they are dynamic shortcuts, which means that nothing can belong to a set or a search folder that does not exist elsewhere in our project. Let's just have a look at one of these sets. We can see that they contain shortcuts. The little icons here associated with these nodes indicate that to us. Our access to whatever items are stored within sets and search folders is exactly the same as it would be if we were accessing an item from their main storage locations. It's just that we're accessing them from here rather than somewhere else. So if I open up one of these nodes, I'm opening up the actual node from its original location in my nodes area. I'm just doing it from within this set. And that's a key thing about sets and search folders. And it's what underlies their potential power as analytic and practical entities. The same item can belong to any number of sets and search folders, precisely because they only contain the shortcuts. So you're never duplicating anything by putting it into a set or a search folder. You're just gaining access to it from a different place. There are a whole host of reasons why you might make use of sets and search folders in a research project, both analytically and practically. Here, for example, I've got some practical sets. This one that we're looking at now, codes I'm not sure about yet, is a good example. Often in a project I have codes I'm not sure about yet, but maybe I don't want to think about them right now. I'll just put them in this set to remind myself that I need to reconsider and refine them at a later point in the study. Another example might be when I want to plan out some writing. So here I've got a set called Write Thesis Chapter 4, where I can gather together all of the materials from around my project that I want to use to write that chapter of my thesis. More analytic uses of sets in this project are these three here, which relate to aspects of the interpretation. For example, in this project, I wanted to make the argument that transition to adulthood is more gradual in the Netherlands than it is in the United Kingdom. So here I've created a set to gather the evidence around my project that I'm going to use to make that argument. So far, I've been showing you sets, but search folders are the same. They contain shortcuts to other project items. Here, for example, I've got shortcuts to all the Dutch respondents in my project and another to all the English respondents. The only difference is that the way that they are created Search folders can be created by using the advanced find tool, which is up here. This allows us to find project items based on an individual characteristic or a combination of search criteria. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. You can have a go on your own projects, but I will just show you a couple of the areas. The drop down here indicates all of the different items that you can search for using the advi advanced find option. And here is where you would indicate that you wanted to create a search folder as a result of this find. Sets, however, can be created either manually or as the result of running certain types of query. 
In the video about query results, I showed you how to save the results of queries as nodes, but some queries also allow you to make a set out of the items that satisfy a query. This brings us on to thinking about how we can act on sets and search folders. As usual, by right-clicking on a set or a search folder, we can see some of the actions that can be taken. In addition to these actions, we can also include sets and search folders in queries, meaning that we can scope any query to one set or search folder, or we can use multiple sets and search folders as the basis of making comparisons. In addition, we can visualise sets and search folders in various ways. I'm just going to show you visualising a set in a map, and I'm going to take my tra transition to adulthood map here and show you that one. This is a project map showing me my set in the middle and drawing links to indicate all of the project items that are contained by that set. As is discussed in the video about maps, there are various other actions that we can take, including exporting the map and inserting it in a document where I might be writing up the interpretation about this concept of transition.